to my far right, Shamat Karsandu. He's in the house. We don't get to see him too often, so when he's here, we like to take advantage. We went out last night, had some fun. We we bonded as teammates, right? That's right. Good times. It's going to be a good show today. We'll also have Scott Gertner, who is the director of public Two relations, minutes. correct, George? Ooh. He's the executive director of sports, entertainment, yeah, yeah. Uh, for MGM Resorts. All of MGM. All of it, boy. Yep. And I'm sure he'll have some uh, interesting takes on this weekend. Anything that's come across his desk. An unusual request. I'm sure the celebrities are lining up. Oscar winners, Tony winners, Grammy Award winners, uh, Heisman Trophy winners. They're all coming through. Everybody's plunking down. And I don't believe anybody's getting a pass. I guess unless you're a casino uh, whale. Yeah. I heard yeah, yeah, yeah. nobody's getting And if you go through that, then that's on the casino, but the ticket was purchased. Now, that said, what we haven't gotten is an update on tickets. Anybody know anything? How they're selling? Yeah. like In other words, like two weeks ago, they said there was still at least three to five. I think 3,000 was the number I heard. Mm -hmm. I should, should say that. And there was that mid-range where past 10, 20 rows where you're seen to about where the common man, the one that, hey, man, you know, talk to his wife and maybe putting the vacation money down uh, on this fight. I just, I mean, I don't know. You know, I, I guess it's Coming a 7 to 5,000 range maybe. What I know that people so are. I haven't heard of a sellout. I think I would have heard of a sellout if it was a sellout. I don't think no, it's that. No, it's not sold out. Uh, what I know people are going to start fighting for are weigh-in tickets. I think those that, are uh, free. No, it's I think you, you have to go that. in. Yeah, I'm on right now. And you can only get them by your phone, by the way. It's not mm -hmm. anything that's printed. And yeah. what's Schmecker? The situation right now is I'm just trying to get these free tickets, and they're already none available. Oh man! Literally, really? when av they ca became available literally a minute ago. Because a lot of the people who bought tickets, I think they can get up to like four yeah. per mm -hmm. person, so they're probably four. swallowing a lot of them. Four. Yeah. Well, there'll be resales of that, right? Or 100%. how do they do it? I guess. It if there's not an actual ticket, you'd have to say you want to walk in with me. Is that? It <laughs> must be something like that, right? Hi hey guys. That is Come one way to avoid uh, ticket brokers, right? Yeah, I suppose. Hey man. You have to walk in with them. It's gonna be weird though. I mean, hopefully it's a packed house and everybody that got tickets is actually gonna go. And this is weird. your captain speaking. We are making our descent into Las Vegas McCarran Airport. On behalf of our crew, we'd like to thank you for flying MMA Junkie Airlines. Now please fasten your seatbelts and put your tray tables in your upright position because the descent is gonna be a little bit bumpy. <laughs> Hi, right, Junkie Nation. It's time to roll, baby, on MMA Junkie Radio. With gorgeous George and Go. This is what we do and why we do it, baby. All night long, we roll it! Yes! The MMA Junkie Radio Revolution is upon us. Can you dig it? There's no escape. No escape. Through the vast frontier of cyberspace and through a sea of stars in outer space. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. We've solidified our combat communication stranglehold. We are controlling transmission. With the use of MMA Junkie Radio and Sirius XM satellite radio technology. MMA Junkie Radio, commence transmission. <laughs> Live from MMA Junkie Radio HQ in the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. Here are your hosts, Cortis George and Go. From the fight capital of the world, inside the beautiful Mandalay Bay Race and Sports Book, you are listening to the MMA Junkie Radio Show. I'm your host, Gorgeous George. With me, as always, is the devious and dastardly Goes. Ari's co host, Backy's, handling all the producing duties. It's going to be Danny. And, of course, our latest member, Dan Tom, hovering in the background now. You'll see him at some point today. Sitting to my right, our co-host for the day, our European and UK-based reporter for MMA Junkie, Shamat Kar Sandu's in the house. What up, mate? How you doing? I'm fantastic, mate. I'm very well. Glad to be here. It's a big event. And, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just really looking forward to kind of absorbing things uh, as we get closer and closer to Saturday night. I heard you guys were absorbing some, uh, some drinks yesterday and some food, huh? Yeah. No uh, invite for Gigi on. or what? Uh, well, Goes organized it, so you can blame him for that. Goes. And I have no escape on this one? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. What did happen? I walk in and you just go, we had a great time well, last well, night. Well, I ended up going out with um, Dante, and he was at MGM. So I told him, hey, let's meet up for drinks. And then I think we were just going to have a couple of drinks, and it just turned into, let's hang out. Into headaches yeah. this morning? Yeah. Nah. It wasn't no, too bad. Not what most is needed? 
No. No. Okay. But, uh, but I was up Tonight at like gonna be five bad. o'clock. The jet lag, eight hour difference. I was up. At, I was wide awake at five. Wait, you were up till five a.m. No, our no, no, time? No, 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 no. I was up. I got up at five o'clock this morning. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I was just like wide awake. So. Yeah. But it's always fun because, uh, granted, we had fun, but we were also kind of brainstorming things that we can do with the. With the show, with the website, so it was fun. Yeah, oh. like a, a, a working kind of environment. Even. Oh, yeah, I got it. The write-off yeah, yeah. in case yeah. Uncle Sam's listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this is Fight Week. Mayweather McGregor. It's a live show on Tuesday, August twenty-second, and we have a couple guests headed your way. We'll talk to noted odds maker Joey Odessa, the premier boxing and MMA odds maker for the last twenty years. In combat sports, we'll get his takes on this epic fight that's happening uh, on Saturday. In fact, I know which way he's headed on it, but still, there's other stuff to cover with him aside from who do you think will win. Zeus could be on the other side, and I think he would still go. With, I mean, he really has seen a lot of Floyd, Floyd Mayweather fights, a lot of oh footage. Yeah. He knows everything about that guy. Oh, yeah. And, and his he's family, too. He's yeah. He calls them boxing royalty. He knows a lot about Jeff, Roger, and Floyd Sr. And so somebody God, somebody said it the other day. I should have saved it. Somebody agreed with me that if Floyd Sr. were to box, Conor McGregor would be 50-50. And it was a... Oh, that was a story. Yeah, I think it was either a, a pro MMA fighter or a pro boxer. I'm telling you, man, those boxing skills that one has from when they're little... They don't just go away when you go, I'm retiring, everybody, you know, I had a great career, I want to thank my family, no, no, no. They still go in the gym, they still hit, you know, those mitts, and I'm telling you, I'm not yeah, crazy to like think 20. that. Now, that said, I wouldn't like it to go past the sixth round, you know, because that is an older man, but but still, man, you watch footage of uh, Floyd Sr. hitting the bags and sparring, uh, limited, you know, with, with whoever's throwing back at him, but uh, he still has hands. Regardless, you don't remember who said it? I don't, but I, I do remember exactly what you were saying. Yeah. I think it was a, it was a story. Somebody wrote a story on it. Yeah. Well, uh, Joey Odessa will join us. Scott Gertner will join us in the second half, as you may have heard on the pre-show. He's the direct uh, executive director for MGM Resorts for sports and entertainment. We want to ask him, you know, about the uh, I guess the the other side of the the non-sporting questions. You know, in other words, like you know, how many celebrities are expected to roll in and you know what kind of requests are coming through? I mean, I gotta imagine there's just gonna be jet after private jet parked here at McCarran or at like the executive Pacquiao that we have. Weather? Oh yeah, it's Do just gonna be that? lined up. I wonder how it'll affect McCarran individually because everyone and their mother is flying in for this. Mm-hmm. And uh, has anyone gotten a pass? You know, uh, w- w- were there limited tickets for the celebs and the athletes, or does everyone have to plunk it down? Things like that. Because this is a different animal. They're at T-Mobile for this one, not MGM. Now. Scott oversees all of that, but still, MGM, I think, was a little bit easier to control. Now you have tons of suites. You have that nightclub upstairs. You have those bunkers. So this is a very lucrative fight uh, in terms of the gate. And if they were at $60 million about three, four weeks ago, then I expect the $76 million gate that Pacquiao and uh, Mayweather generated to probably be broken. I don't know how to feel about that because there's a, a part of me that feels like it's a shame that it's like that when you have a fight like Canelo Alvarez and Triple G right around the corner. That should probably draw that sort of attention. But we love spectacle here in the United States. We love it. We can't get enough of it. That's why everybody's showing up to that fight. I hope they can return and do the same thing for Canelo and Triple G because it is really hard to take practically the two best fighters on the planet and match them up at any time, and they were able to do it. That's a big deal, and I think uh, I think people should support by the way, you brought something up that I, if you don't mind, we can discuss because we have plenty of time here to dive into some other topics. But have you noticed that when there's a boxer that wins a fight, especially a, a noted boxer, like in this case, Terrence Crawford, he got to win this past weekend. And I've heard at least 10 people say, oh, man, pound for pound, he's number one. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, what have you done for me lately? Because we kind of heard it off Ward's second win over Kovalev recently. Uh, Joshua, when he defeated Klitschko, people were wondering, you know, is he there? Lomachenko got a win a couple weeks ago. It's really just so subjective that I guess it's which way do you – I mean, I guess you'd have to sit down and break break down their records and uh, maybe their finishing rates, uh, their opponents. That's the uh, Crawford's thing. opponent, I mean, he was a minus $2,500, minus 2500 favorite against his opponent 
So did his stock really go up, or does it have to do more with the fact that he was the most recent of the, be of the, he was the, most the best recent fighters? And the way he took them out. You know, if you're going to face lower competition, then you have to finish. And he did finish. And he finished with a body shot. It just doesn't happen that often, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's the guy I believe Floyd probably was thinking I should avoid on my way out. You know, now's a good time to retire off the Birdo win two years ago and maybe just sail off into the sunset. Of course, an opportunity to go 50-0 and and make $300 million. Can't balk at that, but I believe it was those young guys like Thurman, Porter, and Crawford that might might have been you know knocking, mm -hmm. saying, "Hey, we're young and just as fast, and watch out." Who knows? Because Floyd always proved me wrong. But uh, regardless, are you sticking with one of those two, Triple G or Canelo's the the best pound for pound, or do you have an opinion on who's? I actually kind of like Lemachenko. Mm -hmm. um, I get the Crawford pick. But I just don't think his level of opponents are there yet. I think he can be that guy. Canelo. Canelo has problems with, with guys with speed. Mm -hmm. So for me, I would I would lean towards Lomachenko right now. Gotcha. All right. Uh, on Saturday, this fight takes place. And we haven't gotten your opinion, Shamat Carr. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you see happening on Saturday between these two guys? Well, They've already stood for the three or four national anthems we're going to hear. Yep. and. Burger King guys walked in. Bieber's walked in. Uh, Sinead O'Connor, if she's, if she's around. Uh, I don't mean it that way. If she comes to the arena mm -hmm. um, or, and sings, you know, that's all done. The Corona girls are out, and it's time to box. What happens? I can kind of envision McGregor coming out really unorthodox and, you know, rushing, bull rushing Mayweather in the first kind okay. of round or two. Is right? it one of those where he rushes but then kind of uh, puts his hands up and, like, or is it a Superman punch? Or is it an exchange? <laughs> Let's get into some specifics here. Because um, I've heard the same thing. You know, he's going to be on uh, unorthodox, and I agree. But what what's he doing? I'm not too sure because like we've seen him kind of like rush fighters in the past, right? And do a spinning kick or something like that. <laughs> You're right? right, yeah. Um, but he's not going to be able to do that on this occasion. So I'm not really sure. Like I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I see like a, a left hand or a right hand, or maybe he's just kind of like messing with him. Maybe he'll do the spaghetti yes. arm I in the middle of the ring or something. I could see that. Yeah. Right. Um, but I definitely see Mayweather taking the first backward step, mm -hmm. just to kind of like assess how to deal with McGregor. But then once we get past that, I think what we'll see is Mayweather start to figure out McGregor, start to implement his game, and then over the course of 12 rounds, just point him off, man. Mm -hmm. Get the decision. That's what he does. That's what he does very, very well. You see a decision here? I do. Okay. Goes, how do you see that first 60 seconds of the first round? I've played it over many times in my head, and right. I can absolutely see what Shamakar is saying. But I think one of the tools that Conor McGregor is going to have in his belt is getting the crowd to play against Floyd. Mm -hmm. You know, you're the boxer. You're the one that has to prove to everyone that I don't belong here. So I could actually see him maybe not throwing punches and doing a lot of the baiting, trying to get him to do stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the last minute of the round, closing with volume. A lot of volume to win those early rounds. But you can only do that so long so before the greatest fighter of all time catches up. Why does he have any interest in winning... The first or second round. He doesn't – I don't think he thinks, nor you, nor anybody that's listening, mm -hmm. thinks he's going to decision him. I don't think it's, it's so the So winning fact that the round, really the only thing that benefits is those – is uh, McGregor fans that are going, fuck, is there, a, is there a prop bet to win the first round or the second? Mm -hmm. They cash their ticket, and then they're happy regardless of the I result. I think Floyd's just going to give it to him. Think so? I, I really think that. I don't think he has to do much. Uh -huh. That's just – Floyd's MO is, is, is always he just kind of feels guys out and sees what's going on. And especially with a guy that like Conor McGregor, you have no idea what this guy's going to even look like. I think he'll give him those first two rounds. Ticketmaster just crashed, by the way. Did it? It just crashed, yeah. Wow. Who, who was driving a woman? <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the demand for free weigh-in tickets for this Friday has, uh, has caused the site to crash. Wow. Yeah. I mean, come on. The Anytime these big bands go on tour, they, they haven't been prepared for something like that. The Super Bowl. It boggles my mind. Like yeah, how does this still site. happen? Yeah, get the right servers. You know, you know, you know you're know, going to have a big you know, demand for this stuff. Sort yourself out. Yeah, every time I hear that, I'm like, man, you guys weren't prepared. <laughs> All right. Um, so I believe that Connor's going to throw everything with bad intentions because I don't think he thinks he's going 12. Mm -hmm. I don't think he wants to go 12. I mean, why go 12 if you can go – 12 minutes or 18 minutes, you're still cashing the same check. As long as you're performing, I think the audience will accept 
you went out and you earned your money because a lot of money was um, uh, a lot of people spent a lot of money to watch this a lot of money a lot of revenue was taken in so you do definitely deserve your share but he just cannot lay down like a dog in any way and I don't think he will now does that mean he's gonna go out in a shield and just completely throw 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 I don't know I mean there will be some boxing tactics I'm sure but I believe everything's gonna be with hard intentions and I believe if there's just a point where he's exhausted he'll come out and at some point do the old cover up and that's how the ref will stop it. I anticipate that happens between four and six. I'm going with the early side four. I think it sounds better. Four? Yeah, but um, I'm going with six to eight. That first round, the first thirty seconds, I've been playing it out. Shamak Car's right. I think he's going to do a little bit of a sprint. But I think it's going to be like. Arr! I think the brakes are going to get hit, and I think at that point he needs to get comfortable. A, it's not an octagon; it's a ring. And yeah, he's been having uh, sparring partners, but none of them are Floyd Mayweather, and you haven't had twenty thousand people in attendance. You know, that kind of pressure, that kind of lead up, um, you know, millions watching at home. So I, I think he's going to want to take his time. But one thing I heard recently, I think it was Dan Hardy's been hitting on it, and a lot of people have been hitting on it to counteract a lot of other people that have been saying Connor needs to make it into a phone booth fight because he's big. He needs yeah. to wear down. That's not Connor, what usually Connor does when he uh, fights in mixed martial arts. Space is his game. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so where does he figure out? when there needs to be space or when there needs to be close quarters. Never. I, I think that's why he's going to charge because he's got to cut that ring in half. The worst place he can be on the planet is in the middle of the ring with Floyd Mayweather. He's just not going to hit him. The first Embedded came out, and Floyd's having a whopper. I mean, yeah, I that. He's I done that before, though. Has he? Yeah. If you watch 24-7, there's plenty of times a week before the fight where he's, he's in the car, he's driving, and he's eating uh, fast food. Mm -hmm. He loves that stuff. Okay. It's weird well, to us in MMA. It just doesn't just, happen. Well, I just thought he was maybe starting to get into uh, the mode of this is a walk in the park, and now, now it's time I let everybody know. But we've seen high-level athletes do this kind of stuff in the past. Uh, famously, Usain Bolt, mm -hmm. uh, before he'd do his 100-meter dash, he'd like cane like 30 McChicken nuggets from McDonald's. Really? Yeah. Wow, I'm a he's, big he's Bolt fan. For that, yeah. That. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I just watched the race. Maybe. And not, <laughs> not his embedded. Or so how far before the race does he do that? I think it's like a couple of hours before. A couple of hours? chicken McNuggets? Yeah. 30. You know, of all the fast food, McDonald's is the only one where I kind of almost instantly feel like shit afterwards. So that shocks me that he would do a race after that. Mm. Taco Bell, too. Yeah. What's up? That's heavy. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know. I saw that first embedded and... I think I'm just at the point where I want to get to Saturday and get this thing over with because I, it's still ridiculousness to me. Over with uh, and move on to what, though? Connor, to what, what the picture becomes with Conor please, McGregor? Please, Conor, don't get knocked out. Uh -huh. Just compete. Yeah, the respect's already there. You took the fight. You're putting your cojones on the line. Uh, whatever happens, happens. Don't be ashamed about getting schooled by one of the greatest pro boxers ever. But don't suffer a KO. I don't want to see... Marquez Pacquiao, like a face plant. Because what does that do? It sets 55 back if he were to come back to MMA. We don't even know the answer to that question. I hear that he is coming back from pretty good sources. Um, but, you know, in the past, those same sources have also said he'll go back to 45. He didn't go back to 45. I, I, I don't know. I, I just want him back and competing. And, uh, excuse me? If he comes back, I don't think he'll come back right away. You know, people are saying end of the year. Bullshit, man. Give yourself a hundred million dollars and see what you want to do. You think the Get Kevin back in Lee the gym or spend it? You think the Kevin Lee timeline is correct? I think so. Next July. Mm -hmm. You know he's also obsessed with this Forbes rich list. Um, yes. And so great he, point. He wants to, and it's it, and it's because it goes year by year. Yeah. So it's December thirty first is the final day that you can kind of attribute any revenue that you've generated. Um, so if you can get on that end of year Vegas card. Uh, and it's a Diaz trilogy fight. That's the money fight. That's the thing. Yeah. We mentioned this the other day. Regardless of what happens with Kevin Lee and Ferguson or the eventual return of Habib or anything else, it does. Bel it, I'm starting to hear that, that they are warm. The WME people are warm to that trilogy mm -hmm. before anything else, which yeah. I don't know what to call that. I don't know if I'm happy just because Connor's back or disappointed because – you you can't have an interim title and not unify with the champ if the champ's healthy. Yeah. Now I I'll give the middleweight division a pass because Whitaker has a legit injury. He can't do it. Back comes the GSP booking. Um. But but honestly, when there's an interim champ and a champ, you unify. 
But I think if they're both healthy under the WME kind of era, I think the rule book has just been ripped up, and you know, mm-hmm. it's being there's new rules being written every single day. You know, um, so that, so at that point, let's just get rid of the rankings, right? And well, what I can't I understand mean, is. He's right. The rule book has been torn up. But has it been torn up temporarily while they try and make up some of this ground, make up some of this money, Could create be. new superstars? Or is this just the way it's going to be from here on? Would out? love to know the answer to that, man. Um, I heard from Dana White. No, not privately. Let me get sound like it's private. No, we heard from Dana White that these guys were going to take it to a new level. Well, the new level of what? On the sporting side or the business side? Are you all making fatter dough? Good for you, I guess. I mean, everybody opens up a business and tries to do that. But, the, uh, you know, man, like I said, I, this thing started off as, as uh, you know, a barbaric and everything. And then the Fertitas came in. They created Zufa. And they wanted to make it a sport. That's all I kept hearing for the last 15 years, a sport, a sport. Then we graduated into sports entertainment. And we had a show about this as well. All right, well, where are we? Is it? 50 sport, 50 entertainment. Right now, it really seems like it's 80-20 entertainment over sport. Mm -hmm. And I thought the WME era was going to make it more the other way, 80-20. I'll always realize that there's a Brock Lesnar, a Ronda Rousey, someone that that brings some to the the table that they're going to get to the the front of the queue. You like that? They're going to get to the front of the queue, all right, and they're going to get in first. I realize that. But come on, man. Let's make it 80-20 or 90-10. It can't be the other way around. It's weird because the, the, the people that will complain about this are us three, okay? We're going to say, wait a minute, Diaz McGregor doesn't make sense. What are those guys doing over there? But if you look at all the people in this hotel, they're just going to go, Diaz McGregor again? I'm in. I can't wait for that. Don't you want those people to they're become like us, though, at some you point? You do. You do, but there's no blueprint Because those are also it. the people that go, Borg and Demetrius, I'm out. You see what I'm saying? Whereas us, Borg and Demetrius, fuck yeah, let's break it down. Let's have a party. Yeah. So don't you want to convert more of those casuals into hardcores so that there's no longer just 200,000 or 125,000 guaranteed to order the pay-per-view. There's actually 500,000 fiending for the next pay-per-view or maybe a million. I mean, there's a, there's so many of us hardcores that we want to get we're not missing anything on the Zufa pass or the fight pass. God, I'm all over the place. Uh, you know, we're we're we're, we're uh, buying kits maybe. We're throwing these fight parties. Uh, you know, we're making superstars and more money out of the other ones and not being selective. I think that's the that's the other side of them of uh, that Casual fan versus hardcore fan. But I think Plus, you, you piss off hardcore fans. Sorry to cut you off. That's all right. I don't think you can force it, though. You know? I think, you know, with MMA and, you know, promotion at the UFC being kind of a millenni- millennial sport, I think it will take time. I think over the next 5, 10, 15 years, as the kind of hardcore fan base starts to grow, maybe that baseline of maybe 200 and 250,000 buys for a pay-per-view grows into a baseline of 300,000 or 400,000, right? But it's going to take time. It's the epitome of this fight made with the McGregor. The hardcore boxing community and the hardcore MMA community, this isn't what they wanted. This is not what they were, you know, looking forward to at all. You know, these guys know that we're in no matter what. It's everybody else. It's the other 90%. It's the everyday Joe Schmo um, that never watches any combat sport. But on Saturday night, they're going to have a party at home, order some pizza, get some beers, get their friends over, order the pay-per-view um, just because it's, uh, you know, FOMO, the fear of missing out. Hey, hey. I've never heard that before. I like it. The fear of missing out. You know when the first time I heard one of those things was? One of those, what do they call them? Acronyms or something? Mm-hmm. I don't even know what it's called. Uh, Acronym? Buy, buy one, uh, go free? No. Bug off? YOLO? <laughs> <laughs> it was YOLO. Was it? It was YOLO. <laughs> All right. So here, here's me. Um, I, I'm losing my man card here. I was watching Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Nice. They had spun off to, uh, I guess it was Courtney and Kim. Well, I don't know. Two of them bitches. But <laughs> they're in Miami. And the uh, the sister Courtney has a, a boyfriend that is an alcoholic or right. something, and I just remember one time he goes, they were discussing a trip or something, and he just goes YOLO, and she's like, kind of did the touche, you know, and then that was the end of, um, maybe it was the teaser for coming back for commercial or what, and it drove me nuts. I was like YOLO, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I had to go into Urban Dictionary yeah, and see that. that. <laughs> I go, oh man, all right, now I got to be prepared for. You know, I guess that's, I don't know if that's a, if that's millennial talk or what talk or it's just, it was out of my comfort zone. So now, I was easy, that one was easy to figure out when you said it. But if you had said it a few years ago, I would have been like, <laughs> <laughs> what's this guy talking about? <laughs> I don't even know where I heard it. I think I heard it like a month or two ago. Uh, FOMO? FOMO. FOMO. FOMO, the fear of missing out. Fear of missing fear out. Fear of missing out. I had not heard that one. Yeah. But it flew right off. We all have it, nice. it don't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. You don't want to be that guy on Twitter yeah. going, oh, man. 
Exactly. That's why we encourage people because in MMA, it's easy. Out of 12 fights, stuff's going to go down, man. And I'm telling you, even the worst MMA card, I think you still walk away going, well, it wasn't $60, but that was $40 worth of entertainment. Shit went down, you know? Mm -hmm. Most of the time, they get to the 60 whatever your mark is or pass it. Like UFC 214 was amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that that probably could have been a $100 pay-per-view, but we don't know beforehand, and they're all priced the same. That's the thing with boxing, though, isn't it? It's just all geared to that one yeah. fight. Yeah. And it's hit or miss with that one fight, whether you feel as though as a consumer, whether you got your value for money or not. Exactly, man. At least Tyson was nice enough, kind enough, to give us Christy Martin for a few years as an undercard fighter, and she'd go in there and do her uh, destruction. Speaking of 215, the Demetrius Johnson Ray Borg card, um... And Ganu, he just can't seem to get uh, anybody yeah. on board. Uh, I, I don't believe Overeem's going to take him up on it. I don't know if he's said anything public, but Ngannou uh, caught up with our own John Morgan and Ken Hathaway yesterday. Actually, it was me. Oh, was it you? Yeah, Sorry I'm about that, Shemakar. Okay. I actually interviewed him yesterday. Um, John had to go pick up his kid and stuff like that, so I jumped in on that one. And he's just bummed, and he feels lost. It's like... He wants an opponent, you know, somewhere in the top ten, and the only guy that's, you know, free and not booked for a fight is Overeem. But it's just too short notice for Overeem to jump in on this one. I can't blame Overeem, honestly. Well, of course not. I really can. Gan is a monster, right? He is a monster. Uh, at the same time, if he takes a random opponent in the top fifteen, top twenty, top thirty, just to fill that spot, because he just finished his training camp, so he's like raring to go. But he needs that signature win to kind of catapult him right into that title shot. Situation. I would advise them to t if they're offering him a 20 or 30 rank guy, I would offer it. I know there's a risk involved, uh, and I'll point to uh, Lando Venata, right? Was for versus Ferguson? Did he give him a scare? Yeah, he he, he put okay. him on. A but he did get past him, and now Lando's stock has gone up a little bit, and now you can point back and go, well, that wasn't such a bad matchup after all. It was just his debut. We didn't know. Again, there was a scare for Ferguson, but it kept Ferguson clicking. Mm -hmm. And you know how speed, timing, precision, being out there uh, in front of MMA fans constantly, not taking nine months off or a year off. You can't get lost in the shuffle, man. You get lost in the shuffle, you're, you know, when your time is up and when they want to book a, a big fight, you're left out of the equation. There's just some people that just are awesome fighters. Like Ricardo Lamas here yesterday, man. He's an awesome fighter. Look at his resume. But sometimes he's had years, four years in the last seven, where he's only fought one time, I believe, and he can't get any traction. And then there's others that just peel the fights off, uh, regardless of who they are, and we think they're the greatest thing since sliced bread. So I would say if they are offering them, I don't know if he answered that question, if you asked it, I'd say he'd take it, man. It's a payday. You're on. You're close to your next contract. It's another chance to put a stamp on something. If you think you can beat Junior DeSantos, you should be able to think you can beat the number twenty thirty guy. So what am I missing here? Well, I think it's that whole point of needing that signature win. I personally think he needs that signature win. I think the UFC are now trying to pr promote him, tell his story, kind of, you know, really kind of um, get him out there to the masses so they can kind of, you know, get onto his journey of, you know, potentially fighting for the, right. the heavyweight championship of the world, right? And I think uh, uh, just another knockout win versus Joe Schmo, uh, I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't really do it for me. I think you need to fight and be a legitimate top five contender and uh, a former you know, champion in Junior DeSantos was going to be ideal for that situation. Overeem would be ideal too. I think perhaps, you know, if he can't get Overeem, which I don't think they will be able to for 215, Maybe, you know, get that fight booked for maybe a month or two later. Maybe. Okay, I'm done with that. Right? Yeah. That's not too long to wait. That'd be sweet. Overeem wants to get back in the titles um, you know, situation too. And I, I think Overeem realizes his win at UFC 213 was not the best. Lackluster, yeah. Yes, it was. It was over a top-ranked guy, but nobody ran out of there asking, you know, where to buy his kit. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah, if Overeem can beat Nganu, that gets him right back into the situation as well. How about UFC right. uh, 216 here in Vegas? Well, okay. Yeah, it'd be nice. In front of your new home, Francis. Can we call him Frankie or anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> we were speaking about that yesterday. He's really loving his time here in Vegas. He's a performance. First of all, I have to say, on a personal note, going to the Performance Institute for the first time yesterday, blown away by the facility. It is it was first class stuff there. Yeah. Um and yeah, France is in there like every damn day. He's one of the first fighters that you'd almost say like that's his camp. Yeah. Is the Performance Institute. True. Right? We're start I, I was telling Shamat Car yesterday, I think there's gonna be a lot of fighters that come out and do that. Yeah. I wouldn't blame them. I mean, you either start your camp here and then go home to your coaches or vice versa, but get thirty days here, you know, because it's great for recovery nutrition uh, and i think there's something to be said 
about bumping into Dana White and Sean Shelby in the hallway and and uh, just kind of being one of their guys. You saw what being one of their guys got Hughes and Liddell and, you know, Nogueira or whatever. Some of these guys, a few of the other guys got gyms. Some of the guys used to get the, the comfy jobs mm -hmm. uh, that are no longer available. And uh, speaking of Matt Hughes, did you guys see? Yeah. How about these transitions? Uh, he's wrestling already? He's grappling? That was cool. It was really cool to see. Wow. Yeah, I know, right? Um, Amazing. Yeah. It was just it amazing. Was really touched the heart to see him already kind of back on the mats. Amazing, yeah. Wow, that 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 really is something else. So good on him. Let's take a break, reset. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM Rush 93. We'll take your calls at 866-522-2846. And we'll also be joined by the preeminent odds maker in boxing and MMA. His name is Joey Odessa. Get an early follow on him at MMA Odds. Stay close. We'll be right back.
rid of them. Yeah, well, they're still here. Okay, but now they know I tried to kill them. Hold on, Mom. Here are George and Goes. Week three of the NFL preseason is upon us. Make sure you keep your radio locked on Sirius XM NFL Radio for expert analysis on the latest position battles and transactions around the league. The only place to hear 24-7 coverage of the NFL is Sirius XM, NFL Radio, Channel 88, and on your uh, phone with the Sirius XM app. That same app houses the MMA Junkie Radio Show in HD quality and commercial free. So check us out. We're five days a week, and we bring it. These Our are the faces you want to see in HD. <laughs> These faces right here. Our co-host for the day is Shamat Kar Sandu, based out of the UK. He covers uh, MMA for us, and boxing apparently, for MMA Junkie and USA Today. It's uh, not not only in the UK, but in, in Europe. And you can follow him on Twitter, at Sandu, MMA, S-A-N-D-H-U-M-M-A. Joining us now on the hotline is the preeminent odds maker for the last 20 years in boxing and mixed martial arts. His name's Joe Odessa, and you can follow him on Twitter. At MMA Odds. What's up, Joe? Yo, how you doing? What's going on, fellas? Long time, brother. How you been, man? I'm all right. Yeah, it's been a uh, hell. It's been since uh, no, since the before the Rousey fight. I think was the last time I was on. It might Maybe have been. Yeah. Month or two. Yeah, 2015. Time flies, right? Yeah, it sure does. Hope you and your family are doing well. Uh, Joey, let's get right into it. All right. So um, I'm pretty much clear on how you feel the fight's gonna go, but what is it about this fight that has just drawn better after better or punter after punter um, to this fight and with them hand over fist betting McGregor? Well, you want me to start out with uh, explaining some of the take account stuff that people were confused yeah. on, and then I'll tell you my thoughts there. Let's do it. All right, a lot of people, you're, you're going to, yeah, what's up, buddy? Uh, you're going to read all kinds of stuff this week about take accounts and wagering volume and all that stuff. And here's how, here's how it works. Right now, we'll, we'll just start out. We'll say, let's imagine a million dollars was bet on this fight between both guys. Okay. And the people were like, look, you know, 70% of the money's on Conor McGregor, so we'll make it simple. It's like 700000 on Conor. We're on the flip side, 300000 would be on Floyd. That 300000 at minus 6 to 1, figure he's a 6 to 1 favorite, 5 to 1 favorite, would win somebody fifth, if it was all one bet, it would cost the book 50000 on Floyd. But that 700K on the other side would wipe that out, and it would put the book in a plus of 650,000. Okay, they'd make 650,000 off of Floyd win. We're on the flip side. If McGregor won, at say the comeback on the six to one would be plus 400, they would uh, the book would lose 2.5 million. They'd actually lose 2.8 million at four times 700,000. But uh, you would take off the risk on Mayweather on the other side, which would be 300K, would cost him $2.5 million. So it's not too hard at the 6-1 to favorite to like, get way extended and need, you know, need the favor for a lot of money. Now, the ticket counts are a separate thing. The ticket counts are, uh, let's imagine, uh, let me see, say, say uh, a million dollars again. And 900,000 of those, or say 700, say the ticket counts are 70%. On Connor, thirty percent on Floyd. Which, which, is, okay. which you're saying that that they pretty I, much are, right? That's what it is. Yeah. Well, actually, you know what? Let's do. A, let's do nine. Make it different. We'll make a. Let's say there's nine thousand Connor tickets and ten thousand and a thousand Floyd tickets. Oh, okay. That means ninety percent of the bets are on Connor. Okay, which is probably pretty accurate right now. So that of the seven hundred thousand would mean that each ticket is about seventy-seven dollars each. Where the other thousand tickets on Floyd, which would make up the other, uh, say, three hundred thousand dollars of that, I believe it's three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, of the three hundred thousand bet on Floyd, because we're using that same model, seven hundred thousand, three hundred thousand. The higher wages would be on Floyd. Now, I know that's a lot to dissolve, but if they wrote it down as we were going, it's pretty easy to follow. I think so, right? Yeah, I definitely. Oh, but make any mathematical I, errors there. I definitely caught on to the first part. The second part, what I gather is. That ninety percent of the action is being written on Connor. I uh, know ninety percent of the tickets. That would be 90%. individual tickets. Okay. So whether it's Connor by decision or Connor by KO, uh, anytime, anytime there's ten people in a line, like here at the Mandalay Bay, or, or doing stuff offshore, nine of the tickets are for Connor, regardless. Yeah, it seems nine out of ten tickets are on Connor. Oh. Now somebody said that. Uh, yeah, somebody said that the win. I think it was the win. Needed Connor as of last night, but see that's kind of hard to believe because with a fight like this, 
you almost you really don't want to need Connor. I mean, you, you got Floyd. You know, the, the number opened so high on Floyd and got bet down. It opened at like twenty five to one back in June when it was announced. It got bet down quick. That number dropped fast. So the books didn't take a lot of wagers that say Connor plus twelve hundred, Connor plus eleven hundred, but they did keep taking them all the way down till. I would say it probably started getting kind of steady for a while where it would maintain for a few days at like minus 600, right. which would give back you know anywhere from plus 4 to 1 or plus 5 to 1 on Connor. Um, but I heard that the win might have needed Connor as of last night, and I, all I can say is they probably didn't write enough action, or maybe they took a couple of monster bets on Floyd, which you've got to welcome. If I'm a sports book owner, somebody walks in with, you know, I'd say $5 million and wants to dump $5 million on Floyd, that's great because I'll just jack that number up. All these guys, you know, the way the momentum on this fight is going, everybody's going to bet Connor and continue to bet him. So you could always get that buyback money, whereas not everybody's looking to run out and lay, you know, 6000 to win 1000 or 60000 to win 10000 or 600000 to win 100000 I mean, the Maloof brothers, I guess, bet 880000 That was that big ticket in Vegas right. that everybody was talking about. It got some press. Uh, Joey, you know, the, what about you as far as the fight itself? Um, you obviously like Floyd, but do you like Floyd by KO or decision? Well, see, that's where, you know, I think you're gamb- now you're looking to gamble. And if you want to gamble, might as well just pick one of these props and just take a long shot because I think Floyd's going to win the fight. And this number's dropping so low right now, why well, back yourself into a corner with an exact method of victory? A lot of guys do that. They say, this guy can only win this way. You know, he can't knock him out. Or I think Floyd's going to stop him. Everybody say Floyd won't stop and Floyd won't stop him. I think it'll probably be an accumulation of punches. So do I. Maybe, you know, the referee will step in. You know, after five, you know, four or five rounds with those big gloves, I mean, look, you know, everybody could break this fight down and give analysis, and everybody's got an opinion. I mean, you know, look, you guys ran an article about all the Oscar winners and the Emmy Award winners and, the, you know, the, I don't even know the, the Razzie winners, everything that everybody that's going to this fight and sitting ringside has an opinion on it. And, you know, I'm not saying that their opinion isn't any good, but those people aren't betting. You know, and if they are, it's just entertainment. I mean, the people, you know, look no further than, you know, I always say, you know, I use the example of like Sunday football with Dan Marino. Who knows more about football than Dan Marino? But then you ask him to give his picks on a Sunday, and he goes, what, six and five? You know, five and five, you know, five and six. You know, does average. And same thing, you know, a good example is the Ultimate Fighter show. Let those guys evaluate talent. These guys are right there with those guys watching them in the gym. And they're evaluating talent. You know, I think Sonnen actually did a good job. I think it was Sonnen did a good job. Rashad did a good job. But, I mean, hell, Rampage took Kimbo with his first pick. And there, there's another 0-0 fighter that, you know, that went into boxing. And, I mean, hell, he had Gary Shaw fooled. Conor McGregor's not going to win this fight. He's not going to win it. I mean, I could, you know, I, I'm not... You know, look, I'm not telling you to go out and bet your money on it. I think you should buy the fight. Look, I think it'll probably be entertaining. Kind of probably do some, I don't even know, that Peter Pan hop in the beginning of his bout and stuff. Not going to win the fight. He's in there with the best fighter of his generation. I mean, anybody that's been in the ring that's actually, I mean, I can even say shit. I went back in my, you know, when I was younger, stepping in there, I was in great shape. But then we put those gloves on, he started having guys throw punches at you. Your arms get heavy. You know, it's not the same as MMA. Look at the wrestlers who get in MMA and they get exhausted in the first three minutes. I mean, this is 36 minutes, three-minute rounds with, you know, he might not be as fast as he used to be, but he's still faster than Connor. We're going to anybody Connor's ever fought. And to say that he can't hurt him, I mean, what are they, you know, the general, you know, general think, the line of thinking is, you know, it's the punches you don't see that hurt you. Yeah. How many punches is Mayweather going to land that Connor doesn't see? Are you kidding me? Don't ever tell me a guy can't get knocked out. That's just nonsense. Mm-hmm. You know, um, anybody can get knocked who, who out. Benefited, right. Who benefited the most from them going from 10-ounce to 8-ounce gloves? I think Floyd. So do I. Floyd fought a whole bunch of fights with 8-ounce gloves. Yeah. And he's the I more mean, accurate the club, what, the puncher of the two as well. And he his defense is, is uh, very, very good. Whereas Connors, he's so used to, you know, striking in a different manner. Man, I'm telling you, you start to get exhausted, you start to get hit, these bad habits are going to come out. And if a great, accurate boxer standing in front of you is rat a tat tatting you with 8-ounce gloves, holy cow. I mean, that's that's no fun. That's that, that's doomsday there. 
No, it's no fun. It's shit. No fun at all. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I mean, I tell you what, it's fun. I, I'm Connor. I'm having a blast out there. Yeah. I'm getting, what's he getting paid for this fight? They say 100. Are you kidding me? I, I'd walk to the ring with a boner. Are you <laughs> kidding me? You know what I mean? I'd have wood on the way to the ring. They'd be like, take your mouthpiece out of your trunk. I'm like, that's not yeah, my Rupert mouthpiece. Rupert wearing a cup. <laughs> no, I mean, seriously, though. I mean, are you kidding me? That kind of money I'd fight for. It. I'd, fight, I'd fight anybody. Who wouldn't? This I is know. the greatest thing ever. This is, this is just, you know, this is entertainment. This is awesome, man. Look, I'm a boxing guy. I'm an MMA guy. I'm a wrestling guy. You know, wrestler, you know wrestling's in my heart and blood. You know, and then boxing, MMA. I love, you know, I love these sports, judo. But this is all, you know, you, you got to like it. I mean, I wasn't thrilled about Tony going in the ring, but, you know, because Tony, what did he really do to promote that fight? But this is like, this is a spectacle, you know. You guys were just talking about the, the uh, what was it, Ticketmaster went down or something like that? Yeah, yeah still that's, down. that's what Shamat Carr told us here. It's still, still down. down, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, things. yeah. I mean, people, I mean, I'd rather go to the shows, the preview shows, than go to the go to the actual fight. You know, know, buy the pay-per-view, sit home and kick back. And, I mean, there's a good undercard, too. A lot of guys on this undercard, uh, Davis, I mean, it, 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 even SS Cunningham's on. I mean, there's some, you know, there's like five un- decent undercard fights. So you're going to get, you know, I'm not saying you're what they're charging for those tickets is worth it. But you were saying, you know, your very first question about what's, you know, what's causing people to bet this. And I had said on Twitter earlier in the week, I said, I've never seen anything like it in my life. You know, no Super Bowl, anything, you know, but anything like the momentum on Connor is what I meant. I mean, it's, it's pretty clear what I said, but, it, you know, it gets confused. Some people confuse it. The momentum on this fight on Connor McGregor and the amount of action on him, just one way action, I've never seen it in any sport. I mean, maybe the 90s, you know, I want to look back and say, wow, which sport really, you know, when did I really get kicked in the ass with one way action? And I would think, well, maybe the, I think it was the 95 Super Bowl, San Diego and San Fran. You're a San Fran fan. Everybody was on San Fran. They won by, that was they won by double digits. You know, they almost got backdoored, and they, but they crushed. <laughs> Everybody bet San Fran and over. You know, that was one of those things where the line, you know, and that was only up, what, two weeks before the uh, Super Bowl, whatever it was, yeah. the time after the playoff game and the, the Super Bowl. This has been up since June, and this is just nonstop. And, you know, if I were to compare it to boxing, I would think back to uh, when Holyfield fought Tyson the first time. You know, uh, I was I was down south, and we were right all Holyfield. I was like, Christ, you know? And we were close to Atlanta, so I figured that's probably why. But that was, what, 1997, <coughs> and Vander opened 25 to 1. And wow. uh, when we were doing it, it was down to, uh, you know, people were taking 8 to 1. I mean, uh, yeah, Tyson opened 25 to 1, excuse me. And uh, the comeback on Evander was probably about 12, 13 to 1. And uh, when we started doing it, we were doing Evander plus 800, and it closed like Evander plus 300. So it's kind of a similar pattern, but a lot of that was uh, geographical because we were on the East Coast and the Southeast, you know, South Carolina, Georgia. I mean, that's Evander, Evander Holyfield territory. But uh, the thing about these two fights, though, is, you know, what I could draw the, a similarity between the two of them, if you can find one, is that people believed in Evander. He was the underdog, but they believed that this guy could win. You know, he was all, you know... He, a man of God and everything, he'd come out, well, Connor's got these people thinking the same thing. I mean, he might really believe he's going to win. I don't see it. You know, but he's got everybody thinking he's going to win. Normal people. I mean, I went to a dinner party, like, I don't know, like three weeks ago, and some girl's like, yeah, Connor McGregor, he's going to whip his ass. It's not. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm like, do you, you, know, do you watch fights? <laughs> oh, he's going to kill him. And it's, wow, I man. don't think Connor I mean, thinks he's really going to win, by the way. And that the reason is because... He sparred with boxers before, even while he was just the Cage Warriors guy, the early UFC guy. But then when he came over to Freddie Roach and had a couple sparring sessions with Chris Van Heerden, I'm sure the ones with Polly Malianaji, you see the other two guys that he's had, uh, the young boxers that he's had. I mean, that right there should be enough data for him to know, okay, I'm, I'm here to cash a check. I'm here to provide entertainment, maybe bring a bigger spotlight to MMA. But I'm not here to win this, this boxing match. Eve, Eve, Connor's a smart man. He he has to know that. Joey, let us put you on break. Or, sorry, let us put you on hold for a second. Can we keep you a little bit longer? Because we need to squeeze out one more break, but I'd love to keep asking you some questions. You cool with that? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Yeah, this cool. is Joey Odessa, the preeminent boxing and MMA odds maker for the last 20-plus years. And you're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM Russian A3. We'll be right back.
Hey, but hey, stretch marks are the new tats. They are gorgeous George and Goes. All right, Goes, what do you have for our guest, Joey Odessa, who hung in there with us? And who knows, we may have to even keep him through the sports update because I, think I got some more questions coming in through Twitter, at MMA Junkie Radio, at MMA Junkie George. Uh, and, of course, you can always call into the show. But go ahead, Goes, what do you have for Joey? Joey, we know... We know your stance on Floyd Mayweather for a long time, and you said it even at the beginning of this interview, one of the greatest fighters of our generation. Um, I think we're all in agreement that Conor McGregor probably isn't going to win this fight, but is there a guy at this stage in Floyd Mayweather's career that you feel like could beat the uh, pound-for-pound greatest fighter ever? Uh, you know, I, I want to say, uh, look at, I mean, Crawford just keeps getting better and better. Um, he fought the other night. He fought on, uh, yeah. what did he fight? It was on ESPN. It was a free fight. He knocked out, uh, he unified. He unified the IBF, WBA, WBC, and WBO titles. I mean, he knocked this uh, Julius and Dongo down, what, in the second and third round, stopping him in the third. He stopped him with a body shot. You know, he's much smaller. I mean, he's 100, you know, he's 140 pounds. But, you know, I, I think that, you know, of course, I think Floyd's going to hang him up after this fight. He'll get his 50th win and move on. But, you know, at this point, how can he really, you know, I hear guys talk about it all the time. You know, a guy hasn't lost, how do you bet against him? He, you know, Floyd's 49-0, and 0, man. I mean, 49, going all the way back to the year 2000. Um, you know, Kevin, uh, Kevin I always did an article, and I, I read it this morning, where uh, he talked about Floyd's big gamble where he wanted to go on his own, his self-promotion. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think he, he bought his, con- his rights out or something. And Larry, I mean, Larry Merchant was hating on him back then. He's like, oh, you know, Floyd doesn't look like a $12 million fighter. To me, you know, he said that on the air. Or he said that on the air. Boy, it doesn't look like a twelve million dollar fighter to me. You know, it's you know all snarky and stuff. And I mean, that just carried right through him. I mean, people have been betting against Floyd, you know, for hell since he's been wagering on his fights. You know, since his what thirtieth fight. I mean, how do you go against a guy like that? Even now, and he's not going. Well, Floyd's not dumb. You know, that's one thing about Floyd. I mean, he, you know, he could say he handpicks his opponents, but. You know, he fights guys when, when Floyd wants to fight him. I mean, going all the way back. And hell, I mean, you know, Alvarez, I mean, he smoked Alvarez, Canelo. You know, that one, you know, naturally Cynthia Ross had that 114-114. They got her called out and, you know, I guess dismissed of her duties. But, you know, everybody said, you know, when he fought Mosley, oh, he's never fought a left-hander that hits that hard, you know. And then Mosley, you know, most hell, Mosley hit him with a monster shot. Yeah. Floyd took You know, I don't see... What is Connor? You know, even when look at Connor's fight, Connor isn't like all right. I excuse me. All right, he knocked Aldo silly, he knocked uh, Mendez silly, but I and mean, Alvarez, like he was, and Alvarez. Yeah. I mean, he's he's got the 17 KOs out of 21 wins. So I hear the people that when they say he's got power, but it's it's you know it's in a different sport, um, and there's no disputing his striking is is uh, you know top notch in uh, MMA at the divisions he's been competing. I have to take my hat off to that. Hey, Joey, uh, still got a couple more questions. Can you hang in again? We have Now we got to do a sports update. You got a few minutes? Yeah, go ahead. Go. Awesome. Yeah. All right, folks, give him a follow on Twitter at MMA Odds. The show is at MMA Junkie Radio, and we're joined in studio by Shamak Karsandu at Sandu MMA. We'll be right back after the sports update. We'll keep going. If you see it once, you'll never be the same again. Hey, George. Yes. Hey, what time is... Master, what's the quickest way to find out? Um, I guess t- Ticketmaster, right? Because
we go. It's the second hour of the MMA Junkie Radio Show, and I have a feeling this UK UK based band was chosen by our UK based co-host of the day. So, he, so he was like, "Give me a song that starts with the letter W." And "Wannabe" by the Spice Girls was the first thing that came into my head. I I don't even think I finished saying "W." Wannabe. <laughs> like, yeah, we well even have to right think up. about it. I uh, I was checking out your Instagram and then your last few posts. Amongst them, one of them had to do with a four-year anniversary. Yes. So, congrats on that. Thank you. All right, but. Don't go soft on me. If that lady was not involved in your life, which one of these Spice Girls would be the one? You know, a weekend romp down in the Bahamas. I think when they were all in their prime and I was oh, a, yeah. a, a, you know, a teenager growing up in London, I think uh, Ginger Spice was the one. Ginger? Ginger, Ginger Spice, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. She floated my boat. There you go. I was a Baby Spice guy. Baby Spice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, Gus? Who are you? Uh, Who are you? Probably Baby. Baby. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, because, you know, uh, what's her face? Um, Victoria Beckham, mm-hmm. obviously s- striking, but yep. she just seems so cold, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. She had that constant pout on her face, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's I really windy in Vegas, so you'd have to, like, tie her down or something, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd be in the Bahamas after one night going, what? can you get the next flight out? This, <laughs> you're not that much fun. The fun ended. You know, the, the buzz is over. All right, we kept them for a while longer, Joey Odessa, because we have more questions, and this is one hell of a topic, and that's, Gaming and uh, with Mayweather McGregor on board here on Saturday, this thing's just through the roof. So let's bring him back in. Joey Odessa joining us and goes. You had another question for him? I do have another question. Or, or Joey, did he finish answering your other question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're good. Okay. Uh, Joey, we're looking at the odds right now. We have Mayweather minus 525. McGregor comes back at plus 325. Come fight night, what do you anticipate these odds looking like? Wow. Okay, uh, you know, a lot of people ask me, and uh, I, I never thought it would get down to minus 400, uh, but it did. It actually, uh, I guess a, a book up in Canada that went below 400, which is just stupid. I mean, you know, I'm not going to knock anybody, but I, I had said on Twitter that I, I thought that if anybody dropped below minus 400, probably shouldn't have a job. Um, just a bad number, man. You can't go that low on this fight. You know, regardless, you've got to take a stance at some some point. I mean... If they're going to lay minus 350, they're going to lay minus 400. If they're going to lay minus 400, they're probably going to lay minus 500. But everybody knows that this line keeps dropping and people keep betting it. At some point, you've got to take a position. I think that, you know, that probably the right position to take would be at minus 400, you know, and then go up a little bit. Because these guys, somebody's holding out with Mayweather money. And I know a guy, you know, I, I know somebody that's in Vegas right now that laid minus 500. And let me say, I don't think I have the email here. Laid 5 to 1. I, I, I believe he bet a... Uh, we he bet two hundred thousand on him, and he bet it offshore, you know, to win. I guess to win forty thousand, and that's all they would give him was to win forty thousand. And then the line dropped down to like minus four fifty. He sent me an email. He was livid, pissed. He's like, I can't believe this line keeps dropping. What's going on? And you know what? There's a lot of things that this fight brings out. Like a lot of people, it, it's brought like the topic of fight fixing to the forefront because nobody can understand. You know, people just talking a lot of nonsense, you know, how can this fight be dropping like that, you know, and I always say somebody knows something, well, in this case, I don't think anybody knows anything, uh, you know, it's the, the exact opposite, I mean, it, these are just fans, people that, you know, b- that believe that Connor's going to beat him, or, you know, that don't watch enough boxing, uh, you know, and the other thing is, uh, it's the, you know, a lot of the MMA people are betting it, some of these big boxing bettors, I believe that they're going to hold out until, uh, until close to post time, so to answer your question, I still maintain. I don't think it's gonna. I think it's gonna close above four hundred. I think it'll probably close about four fifty five hundred. Joey, if a line is six hundred, if Mayweather's minus six hundred on a Friday, and I come back and it's five hundred on Monday, if you had to guess, how much was wagered for a line to drop a hundred dollars like that, a hundred points or whatever you call you know, it? Is that like fifty G's, five hundred G's? Like how much is that? Do you, do you think? Well, here's the thing. Everybody, you know, there's a market price, and everybody tries to stay within the market price. So, um, you know, for instance, there's a, a, a sports service in Vegas. That it's called Don Best Sports. And on Don Best, they have, you know, probably, I don't know how many casinos, 80 casinos, sports books and casinos. And a lot of the 80, probably 20 of the 80 are all, you know, 20 of the 80 have multiple books, have like four books. So if two offshore books get hit, you might see eight spots, you know, go black. And when I say go black, that means that the number changes and it highlights, like with a black highlighter above the numbers, meaning that 
the number just changed. So everybody looks at that and they panic and they're like, oh shit, you know, that Chris and this book and that book and oh, look, these guys all, all went down. They must have got bad. We got to stay with the market. And that philosophy, you know, you know, that's it, it, a two way street because, you know, a lot of times the market is just polluted. It was just a bad market. And in this case, you know, with somebody dropping below 400, that was just really, you know, it was just really dumb. It was almost irresponsible. It's almost as bad as staying at like minus 800 when there's minus 450s, 500s out there. So it might not have taken that much money. You know, if one book got bet, say, 10,000 on McGregor, you know, at plus 400 or plus 450, which, you know, 600, 400, 600, 450, they, uh, you know, they, they open themselves up for a $45,000, $40,000 or $45,000 loss if uh, McGregor wins. So they might move the number 50 cents or 100 cents, you know, in line with their business because they might have a whole bunch of U.K. customers, you know, or, or you know, on the, on the flip side, you know, if you're out, you know, if you have a bunch of Vegas customers, they might be betting Floyd. So they're moving to their business, and it might not take that much. Uh, you know, I can manipulate the screen with, with small bets. You know, if a real sharp guy comes in and bets two spots for, say, 5000 on Connor, the two spots might move, which would move eight spots on the screen and cause the entire market to move. So as far as, uh, you know, it's hard to tell. Okay. You know, I, I guess that was a pretty complicated answer for something that was pretty simple. It's, it's hard to tell. In the beginning, when the front line first opens, a lot of places move really, really aggressively, and they should, because that's the goal, to get to the right number you know, as quickly as possible with as few bets as possible. So, in theory, you know, you're not you're not looking for exactly two way action. You're just looking for, you know, or for a balanced chart. You're looking for two way action where the number looks appealing on both sides. Like I bet early on Mayweather. I I, I laid six over six minus six hundred and change on Mayweather. It's almost embarrassing the number I laid because I thought that it was you know wasn't going to go any lower than that. But you know, I couldn't have been more wrong, and that's why. You know, I talked about the emails I got from somebody that said, geez, I can't believe this line's dropping like this. What's going on? You know, people talk about fight fixing and this. And not going to happen in this fight. Are you kidding me? You know, I saw there was there was actually a fake news site up where it said, you know, they had like a script laid out for it. I just, I mean, it, nobody needs to be reading, you know, that's just nonsense anyway. But, you know, it's not going to happen. People said, well, Floyd will go out and bet, you know, half a million dollars on, on Connor. Well, you think that you could get away with something like that without people knowing? I mean, Maloof only bet, well, he, I say only, he bet 880000 to win, what, 200000 or something like that? And he, uh, and it was front page everywhere. Yeah. So Floyd gets $300 million for this fight or whatever he's getting. You think he's, like, the extra couple of million is really going to mean that much to him? Not to mention, you know, if he, if he sends one guy out, say, hypothetically, these guys, but suppose there was business on this fight, which there isn't. But say he said, "All right, I'm going to go out. And I'm going to, I'm going to." He couldn't. He couldn't spread the money out, you know, over time long enough to make the profit back. But even if he did, how many people are going? To, that's going to trickle down. Somebody's going to see, you know, whoever go to, you know, the person go to the counter and bet it. And the guy at the counter is going to wake up to it right away. He should, you know, the large amounts of money. If the guy's sending it offshore, how can he keep that a secret? I mean, how much is, is his cut of it? It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You know, Floyd gave it to him and said, look, I'm going to go bet $10 million on McGregor at 4-1 to one and make, you know, $40 million more. Well, what's that guy's cut for, for running it to the, to the counter, you know, without him finding out? And you've got to spread it out among multiple people. And is he not going to tell his cousin that, hey, look, Floyd's going to, you know, Floyd's going to job the fight and on and on and on. It just doesn't, just nonsense. It's, it's bullshit. And it's, it's insulting to anybody that, uh, you know, that watches this stuff. I'm not saying it never happened. I mean, it just happened with that Korean kid. Right. Uh, you know, And it backfired <laughs> to yeah. top it off. So, uh, well, you, know, you get caught. That was only 70000 or whatever it was. Yeah. You got to get MMA. caught. Yeah. I mean, it, it, Nobody can hold a secret yeah. these days. They can't. Nobody. I oh, know. No, they can't. No, no on, shot they can. No, I'm, on Twitter, somebody's asking me, what if the fight stops via DQ or stoppage? Um... Yeah, can you answer that? I suppose uh, on either side, if it's somebody gets disqualified, the other guy wins. You're so if you bet Connor and he gets disqualified, you lost. If you bet uh, Mayweather yep, and he gets disqualified, you lost. As far as a stoppage, it's the same thing. If you bet Connor and he got stopped, you lost. I'm not sure if Galley's question here. Um, pretty. Unless it's otherwise listed. Yeah. 
Um, all right. Well, listen, man. Um, I, you know, like I said, we'll we'll end with this. I, I think Mayweather is going to win this fight. You got me thinking a little bit here about why, you know, put myself in a back myself into a corner. I like the KO, and frankly, it's because I don't want to walk up to this counter and give him five twenty-five to win one when I can just give him one seventy to win one, because I but really believe that a, that a professional boxer can put out a uh, amateur boxer within twelve rounds. But it has been two years. Who knows? But there you go, George. What I was just going to say is it's not easy. If it was easy and it, well, there wasn't any pain involved or any of that, you know, your guts up in your throat laying at 5-1, to one, everybody would do it. And everybody doesn't win. Only a very small percentage of people win betting, you know, over the long haul. So you're going to have to put it out there. You're going to have to push that money in if you want to make money. You know, you can't. You got you to just you gotta go all in on it. You know, if you want to make, you know, if you just want to take, you know, if you want to gamble, then you, you back yourself into a corner. Maybe you bet a couple props for entertainment, but if you want to earn money, you know, it takes some work, and the work is your money. I mean, you got to push that money in there. Hey, one more question. Hard earned money. One more question. Everybody keeps telling me, anybody that's pro, May pro, pro, pro Floyd Mayweather, he's going to take a round or two to figure him out. You've seen practically every Floyd Mayweather fight. How long do you think it'll take him for him to figure out? Uh, Connor being unorthodox or any sort of hijinks he'll be up to before he'll start laying it on him. Be because what I do want to do is walk up and just pick one round and put something on Floyd uh, just for fun. So how long do you think it'll take him to figure it out? Well, I mean, if I had to guess, it, it all, which are, the question you're asking me, it all depends on Connor. Depends what kind of fight Connor fights. If Connor just comes straight forward and tries to box, if Floyd just. I don't think Floyd. I don't think Connor wants to go 36 minutes. I think he's going to go out there and really try and knock his head off. Yeah, I mean he's he's going to go out there. He's probably going to rough him up a little bit. I mean, look at you know Hatton might have won was it the third round or whatever, and then Floyd just said, okay, this is how he's going to fight. That's always you know Floyd might go out there see what he's got, and if Connor just gets it all out there in the beginning, Floyd will make his. Nobody makes adjustments like Floyd Mayweather, better than anybody at making adjustments in the ring. He'll make his adjustments so. I mean, if I had, if you said to me, you got put a gun to your head, you got to bet what round, probably take the sixth or seventh round. Okay, good enough, you know, my I, man. I give him a couple rounds, you know, a couple rounds to feel him out. Thank you so much for joining us here. We really enjoyed having you on the show. We appreciate it, Joey. Appreciate your time. Yeah, it's been a while. I'm a little rusty. All right, thanks, guys. Have a great <laughs> one. <laughs> All right, Joey, take care. Folks, give him a follow on Twitter, at MMA Odds. Let's sneak some calls in here before we get to our next guest. Coming up here at the bottom of the hour. Uh, Marco from Waco. What's up, Marco? Marco from Waco. ¿Qué pasa, Atos? ¿Qué pasa? ¿Cómo estás? Hey, a Scary Spice is a freak, dude. I don't know why you pick the other uh, Spice Girls. A scary Spice was the one do, having three sons with her ex husband and the babysitter. You know, <laughs> what's, what's, you know what's funny is this is the one topic where. You can get a group of people and they never agree on anything. Everybody always has a different. Well, there's five spice of them. Girl. Yeah, yeah. So you're saying Scary <laughs> Spice was the nutty one? Yeah, maybe the one that is in uh, America got talent. She's the nutty one because she divorced her ex-husband because he caught him having sex with the babysitter uh, by himself instead of having. What's with the babysitters, with man? Didn't Affleck get caught with a babysitter and mm -hmm. the governor? Yeah, yeah Schwarzenegger yeah, yeah. with the yeah. babysitter. Huh. I, don't know. <laughs> I didn't get babysat by any of these hot chicks, did you? I mean, no, I don't remember that either. Like, I think it, I, I think basically the guy or the woman has to put her foot down and go, ah, uh -uh, you know, like, that's, mm -hmm. we got to get Big Bertha in here to babysit, <laughs> not this young lady. We'll get a male and then the other like guy probably should know better le than to, like, do it that close to home. You know what I mean? So Sloppy. <laughs> yeah, very sloppy on, on many accounts. All right, Marco, what you got? Yeah, ah, I, I got a beef to pick with you because well, you're too close to the trees to see the forest. Talking about MMA being eighty percent entertainment and twenty percent export. Okay, if you take a look, I at think the, that's at what WME day, is is like. Though I don't know that I agree with it, but it seems that way at times. But yeah, no, go ahead, go with your point. Go ahead. Yeah, if, if, if you see like uh, the all the champions are either scheduled to fight or have fought the number one contender. Except for the allies of Conor McGregor and Bispin. Uh, you know, Demetrius is fighting board. Uh, Jen Jackson is going to fight Nomajunas. Freaking uh, Amanda is Kachachenko. You got Cody Dillashaw. Uh, then you got, got uh, Good, they just fought Maya for crying out loud. 
The only reason this pit is not fighting uh, Whitaker is because Whitaker got hurt. Mm -hmm. John John just fought uh, uh, Cormier, and then Stipe just fought JDS. So if you don't want to call that like uh, the third number one contender for the, the right fight, I mean, you are just focusing this McGregor on outlier. Um, and it's a little bit unfair to the landscape of the sport. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Borg. Dillashaw, yeah, he's right there. Uh, 45 is Max versus Frankie. That's pretty solid, right? Yeah. McGregor will leave him out of that. 55 will leave him out. That's a mess. Uh, he's got a good point with, with... Okay, and who was it before that? Uh, Demetrius fought with Hayes. He wasn't the number one contender. Mm -hmm. And then Cody fought Dominic. We ha we all ha don't have a problem with that. Sense. Aldo fought Holloway. So that's the most recent fight, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... <coughs> And then uh, McGregor fought. Oh, no, McGregor didn't defend, and we had to create that matchup. So maybe going back a fight, Marco, it doesn't look too good. But what you presented looks good. So maybe halfway, 50-50 we sit here because uh, Henderson wasn't also the number one. And um, who else was out there? I think heavyweight's been pretty solid. I think deserving guys well, have been out there. They haven't had a choice. I mean, the – Cyborg sure didn't unify against the clear number one 45er right now. And um, let me see. And then when Ronda came back and got her shot, she wasn't number one, was she? No. Yeah. So, you know, I think going back a wave, there was a little bit more entertainment versus sporting. Lined up in front of us, it's more sporting versus entertainment. So, yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, good show today. We'll you guys Thank you, brother. Stop. All right. We'll see you. Uh, Brian in Boston. What's up, Brian? Hey guys, hey, that was a really good segment with uh, with, with Joey, uh, George. I have to give you credit, man. You've been a loyal MMA soldier by talking about this fight and promoting this fight. But I can't stand this. I don't know what I hate more to talk about this fight or all that CM Punk crap we had to sit through. Joey gave some good advice on what to bet and how to make some money. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you right off the bat how to make a hundred bucks on this fight. Don't buy it. <laughs> there is no. I'm sorry, man. I, I'm, I'm getting worked up. There is no chance McGregor wins. I don't want to hear the phrase, puncher's chance again. Because I'll tell you, Diego Corrales, Oscar De La Hoya, Ricky Hatton, you know, Pacquiao, Zab Judah, Mosley. No puncher's chance. This is not happening. I think the Queen of England versus Bob Sapp would be just as competitive as what we're going to see Saturday night. <laughs> I mean, I, dude, I can't take it anymore. Just, just get this bullshit over with. This is not a real fight. It's not a boxing match. It's just McGregor and Maybaker making a ton of money and laughing at us. Enough of this shit. Ooh, I feel like I just went to church. I feel better now. Well, I think, I think for people out there that feel like you do, um, this hasn't really been a long, drawn-out kind of event. Thank God. Like, you know, like May Pack took, what, five years to put together? This mm -hmm. relatively... Or even Aldo McGregor? That one took a while. Exactly. This has been put together very, very quickly. Yeah. So I guess anyone that's kind of hating on this fight or is, isn't really into it, you got, what, five days? And that's it. You're good. You're, in, you're, you're clear. You're clear of this and you can get back to uh, business as normal, business as usual. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what that's what I want to do. I'm, you know what's interesting? I, I'm looking forward to ranking on. Go ahead. Is talking to the people involved, like Joey and Scott, in a few minutes, and Kevin Ioli and Al Bernstein. <laughs> that w I've had fun with. But mm -hmm. when it comes back to, so who do you think's gonna win? You know, and then like Brian says, you get into this puncher's chance and all this other stuff. I I just I I can't see it, man. I, the I, the I, thing I, that's ridiculous though, George, mm -hmm. is we get all these different opinions, right? Just. To start the show, we gave three different opinions of how the beginning of the fight will start, but none of them ever sways us into thinking Connor's going to win. We're just oh, we're just grasping at straws. But it's there, weird. The, I, Brian's frustration probably comes from hearing a lot of MMA people that are giving him more than just uh, you know some people. You know what I'd like to know? Are you a ten to one guy, or maybe one out of ten Connor wins, one out of a hundred Connor wins, or one out of a thousand Connor wins? That's what I'd like to know for the rest of the week. Best Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, let's just go. No, no, it's got to be this Floyd Mayweather, which probably a notch down from the best Floyd mm -hmm. Mayweather, you know, versus Conor McGregor, one in a amateur hundred. boxer. One in a hundred? That's, an, no, that's an easy one. Zero Dan in Tom, a million. Three in 100? See, I'm, I think he beats him. I think Conor wins one out of 1,000, not one out of 100. Not, Eduardo, even, not even one, George. No. What is it? He's going to get killed. One out of a thousand. He's All get right. Killed. And and Dante, who who do you got? 
out of 100 huh oh okay all right um see you, you know uh, even the one out of 100 people i want to strangle like shamat car and goes good luck hit 49 that. times 49 times uh pro boxers went up against them and and just couldn't get it done well i'm not i'm just thinking injury You are grasping at straws. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, look. This, this, guys, this isn't, it's not happening. No, never, ever. Zero in a million. That's, that, no, never. Not happening. One in a hundred. Are you high? Okay, you know what? No. I'm going piss, I'm gonna piss McGregor <laughs> off. I'm going to piss McGregor fans even more. I do believe that, uh, that Floyd can go in MMA and beat McGregor more than one out of a thousand. Yeah. And maybe even more than one out of a hundred. I think he can Because do. the way they start off and because McGregor's not wrestling based. If you were to tell me Edgar, for example, uh, then I'd say the takedown just happens every single time. I guess you have to watch out for maybe an uppercut, but uh, McGregor doesn't start off that way. And Floyd with four-ounce gloves, he's going to throw something. In every one of those hundred fights, he's going to throw something before the takedown it's happens. It's going to be quick. Yeah, and there's a chance. I think there's more of a sure. chance then, but, but um, I don't know. I think you know, it's, a better, it's a better argument than this one. I think what you're gonna see at McGregor is something that you haven't seen before. Like I just, we just don't know what he's gonna do, and that's why I kind of lean towards the kind of one in a hundred. Maybe, it's, maybe it is one one in a thousand, right? But I just feel like he's so unorthodox. He's so um, out of the norm. Out of this is not just out of the box. This is out of Pandora's box, right? We just don't know what he's gonna do. We don't know what kind of strategy he's gonna implement. Maybe he will, you know, bull rush him at the beginning, right? But what he's gonna bring to the table isn't what professional boxers have brought to the table against Mayweather for the last 20 plus years, right? He's going to bring something that we haven't seen before, and that's why there's that question mark. We just don't know what's going to happen. But aren't those the boxers that get weeded out early? What like do you mean? They, they, you know, as little kids, somebody just the, you know, okay, uh, a dad brings a kid, hey, can you teach my son boxing? And then he's just so terrible. The, the, the coach says, Hey, listen. We just can't get real far with here. I, I got other eight other boys I want to pay attention to. This guy, he's, he's unorthodox. He, I try and teach him. He just doesn't get it. Or maybe this is the guy that represents Somalia in the Olympics, you know, and just gets fucking beat the shit down by a Cuban boxer that just advances, advances. You know, the the, the boxing's the way it is for a reason. You know, there's certain things that work. Um, uh. Yeah, I mean... At the end of every Floyd Mayweather fight, this is what I think is remarkable about Floyd. There's a lot of MMA fights where you go, all right, if this guy tactically changed a few things, the second fight could be different. With Floyd Mayweather, Canelo Alvarez, like, there's almost nothing you could say. If he would have done this, he would have been successful. Floyd was just better than him at everything. And he's done that to every opponent. That's That's my problem. I feel like what we're saying with the unorthodox angle is... Um, or not, hey, let's is code for not being good at boxing. Let's is start. Really what it is. Let's start. Um, do we have any slow forwards? Let's start them in the Premier League, or do we have any um, five foot six players that we can start at center in an NBA game? Like I just feel like it doesn't work. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and so the unorthodox guy, I just think that that it's gonna be funny for a bit. Maybe he'll sleep on the side like Nate, Nick Diaz did against Anderson, or maybe he'll throw his hands up and get the crowd into it. But once they square up, there is there is the straight, faster punch that does arrive at some point, and it's damaging. You start getting your bell rung, you're like, oh, man. You know, like professional boxers know how to deal with that attrition. Um, someone who isn't as experienced or as good, mm -hmm. they're going to start firing back, and it's going to get sloppier and sloppier, and you're going to get more damaged, more damaged, and that's why I think it's going to be – it's going to be uh, – a, a terrible ending to it all, you know. Can you counter that? Your your team Tottenham has slow forwards. Is that <laughs> difficult to <laughs> like? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, what, what up? They got one of the best ones, man. <laughs> Harry Kane's no He's joke. He's killing it. Yeah, I know, right? Listen, Although Ali might not be happy, might be headed a uh, little north. Let's not West? talk about that. Let's not talk about that right now. <laughs> all right, um, um, Brian, let me let you go. You stimulated some great talk, and hopefully, we calmed you down a little bit. No, I'm still furious. <laughs> Bye, boy. <laughs> all right, see ya. What I will say is that I go back to what you just said five, about five minutes ago. So I'm not really interested in prediction talk of what's going to happen on fight night. This whole event, I've been fascinated by just from the business angle, from the media angle, how they promoted it, how they've captured the imagination of the wider public, 
with this fight over the course of the last couple of months and that's something that you can talk about forever and really kind of like look back in retrospect and dissect to see how they got this done it's, 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 it's fascinating how many people from different walks of life um, in my circle have been kind of asking me about this fight and I'm, I'm curious to find out why this piqued their interest and how uh, how they've become so emotionally attached to this event you know what I mean yeah and the fact that like you said in two months one billion dollars yeah. could likely be generated and be funneled across this city two gentlemen yeah two promotions oh yeah. sorry one Zuf is not uh they're silent and and or sorry uh WME IMGs you know what I mean yep uh the hotels just it's 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 incredible how fast it all happened even the residual um deals around the world like for example Mc McGregor has got a deal with BetSafe uh, in Europe, a sponsorship deal. That's a, a region-specific sponsorship deal. That's not a global deal. That's not for the U.S. market. That's just for Europe. So there's there's tons of these kind of deals that are you know he's got the he just uh, launched his new um, is it Mac Talk app, mm. right? And that's like uh, for like two bucks or or a pound in the U.K. How many downloads do you reckon that's had? You know, if you get a what a million downloads, a million dollars in the bank, you split that with Google or Apple or whatever it is. It's crazy. Money to be made all over the shop. Yeah. All right, you're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM Rush 93. When we come back, we'll be talking to Scott Gertner from MGM Resorts. So stay close. We'll be right back in a few minutes.
You know that scene in Star Wars where Darth Vader tells Luke he's his father? What if I walked in right after with my voice and was like... I'm your Uncle Walter. Can I get a lift home? That'd be crazy, right? Anyway, here Georgian goes. All right, we're now going to be joined by the executive director of PR, entertainment, and sports for all of MGM Resorts International, Scott Gertner. And just want to let everybody know that for more information on our hotel, if you're coming here this week, go to MandalayBay.com. Follow them on their social media fronts of Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.com forward slash Mandalay Bay. Scott, how you doing, sir? I am doing well, George. We are uh, we are gearing up and getting ready, and and it's a uh, it's a busy, busy fight week as you can imagine. Side by side, where does it compare against Floyd and um, and Pacquiao? Just in terms of uh, how big it is, the event. You know what? It's it's going to sound like a cliche, but I'll be very honest with you. They're just different. Okay. And they're different for a variety of reasons, but the biggest one that I can think of is that we've never seen a boxing, uh, I would say we've never seen a boxer with an, you know, an MMA or mixed martial arts fighter. And so I think what's, what's great for the two sports together is that everyone's coming together and, and making, uh, making history in the ring. And I, I'd be interested to see what happens with, uh, you know, if a if a boxer fought a UFC fighter or a Bellator fighter in an octagon, but uh, I'll I'll tell you maybe a little more after the fight on Saturday night. I'd be in, I'm gonna really be intrigued by what happens. How do things change because you're at T-Mobile now versus MGM? That used to be basically Floyd's second home. Uh, now at the T-Mobile, is it just as simple as hey, there's more seats, there's more suites? Because not only are there those suites around the arena. On multiple levels, there's the club at the top. There's also the bunker suites, but is it just ba- it basically just more lucrative and uh, and a better presentation there? Um, I don't, wouldn't call it a better presentation. I would definitely call it a more of a new venue. You know, we opened T-Mobile Arena with our partners at AEG uh, a little over 16 months ago, and uh, you know we're already hosting some of the biggest names in sports and entertainment. Uh, and celebrities at the venue. I, I think I think what we're seeing is just a, a unique opportunity, like I said at the beginning, of, of two sports coming together. I, I think what we do now have, like you mentioned, we're, with the premium products, you know, the suites, the uh, terrace boxes, and uh, and the bunker suites down below. So it really gives a, a fan of a sport or, or a fan of a concert a, a new look uh, to Las Vegas that Las Vegas hasn't had uh, in the past. What have you found to be more of a request from a celebrity or an athlete to be in a to be able to go in a bunker suite and then just come out to your suite, uh, seat the way that you can there at the T-Mobile, or do they still want to be up close? Uh, I'm not involved with the celebrities this specifically, but I can tell you that I know that uh, I, th- I think it's both. I think you you know some some athletes and celebs, the fans of the sport or the concert who want to see uh, a sporting event up close do like the, the bunker suites, and others like to sit maybe up even off the floor for an event like this because they can see over the ring and they're not looking up the whole time. And, and while the floor has some prestige to it, I think the best seat in the house is like five to ten rows on off the side. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Folks, if you've never been in the bunker suite, it's very unique. You go in through uh, you know your own private entrance, and you basically are at like a, a small club slash bar. You know you have everything at your disposal, your own bathroom, and then you just pop out through a door, and boom, you're right there, 50 yard line. I think those are definitely a little bit more kind than up close. I, I've had my share of both, but I just think the other one's more of a comfort throughout the whole night. Versus, I mean, for 36 minutes, yeah, it's pretty cool to be up there, but. You are kind of looking up, and um, I, I don't know. That, that's my opinion. It uh, goes, what do you have for Scott Gertner? Scott, the, the T-Mobile arena, we always talk about these arenas here in Las Vegas and how they kind of have that, that soul and the, the bones, right? When you walk into the Mandalay Bay, you see the Castillo Corrales banner, and you instantly take yourself to where you were when that fight happened. T-Mobile's actually had some pretty big fights already in, in its uh, young existence. What's the feeling like for that arena, and do you feel like it's, the home to MMA, the home to boxing, do you feel like eventually it'll be just the hockey arena? Can you kind of elaborate on it a little bit? I think it's the home of 
every major event that might come to Vegas. Uh, I mean, separate from the Raiders, of course. Uh, but, um, you know, we, we've had major concerts, whether it's Guns N' Roses, whether it's the Killers as a local band, whether it's, uh, you know, Katy Perry coming up next year, uh, Lady Gaga, just to name a few. But, uh, you know, then we've had, we're going to have hockey, as you know. We've already had hockey with both UNLV's club team and uh, and the Frozen Fury uh, Kings and uh, games last year in the exhibition season. Uh, you know, major Pac-12 basketball tournaments, uh, one-off games, whether it's Kentucky, Carolina, and Duke UNLV. Uh, so, you know, you, you really see the, the full spectrum of events that can take place in there. We, in fact, have a major convention that is going to be hosting an event uh, on Wednesday night uh, in T-Mobile Arena. So I, I think I think really what it does is it, it gives a variety of uh, business partners and uh, and clients an opportunity to host an, uh, host a function or an event inside an arena and a, and a venue that has yet to be seen in Las Vegas. And it really has changed. I know a lot of people call it you know, changing the landscape, but I think it really has been that for the city in the last you know, 16 months since we opened in April of, of 16. You know, a lot of fans, when this fight's over, Mayweather and McGregor, they'll be able to close that book. But your job is really unique, and there's so many things that have to be accounted for that night. What time do you think you go to bed that night, and when can you can MGM Properties officially close the book on that event? Next week. <laughs> wow. I'll sleep <laughs> next week. Uh, in all seriousness, you know, I mean, I don't know what I can't predict the future. If I did, I wouldn't probably be in my job. But I, uh, I can tell you that. Uh, you know, these fights run long at times. The post-fight press conferences uh, run until later in the evening and uh, or early mornings. And uh, so really, it's kind of a, we, we know what we're getting into. We know what our jobs entail. And, and at that point, you know, we just kind of go with the flow and, and, uh, and manage it accordingly. So I, I think that uh, I always like to say that hopefully the fight gets done a little early so I can get some sleep. But, uh, you know, there's no rest for the weary in this job. And and we'll, uh, we'll enjoy it until it's done. Scott Gertner, our guest here at MMA Junkie Radio. He is the director, executive director excuse me, for PR, sports, and entertainment. Uh, Scott, when Connor fights in mixed martial arts, usually we say the Irish are in town. Uh, are the Irish going to be in town in, in, in droves the way you know, he, they, they do for MMA? Is it going to be the same? Have you gotten the same type of feel that they're going to come for boxing? And I ask only because, you know, I mean, he is a considerable underdog, and I just don't know a lot of people wanting to come from the other side uh, for this matchup. Or what have you seen? I, I mean, I've seen kind of both. I, I think I think what you're seeing on the fan side specifically is you know, a lot of people who back Connor are flying over from uh, Ireland and Europe and and uh, and elsewhere, even domestically. Uh, I think you also have a lot of fans uh, in Las, who will be in Las Vegas if they're not locally already, uh, who are just sports fans and they're fight fans, and so they want to see the intrigue of of what these two can do together. And, you know, you've got someone who's at the back end of his career, I and mean, he's already retired and Floyd, and and is now coming back, uh, you know, for for another fight, which is great, great for the city and great for the sport. And you've got an, uh, a guy like. Uh, like Connor, who has kind of you know created his own legacy in the MMA world, and and probably has a good interest, a strong interest, and is a good fighter in his own right. And so I think uh, it's just two different styles, and we always say styles make fights, but it'll be interesting to see, and I think uh, it'll be interesting to see what uh, what the fans think. I wanted to ask you as well: um, Are there you know are you guys the host hotel? Because Usually when we're credentialed, we have, like, a, the list of things, you know, and, like, who's the host hotel. But is MGM the host hotel for this event? MGM Grand is considered the host hotel. Okay. And are uh, you guys going to do those receptions, like, for the fighters? Have, I'm sorry. Do we have what? The grand receptions for the fighters. I, I think I've seen that in the, the past. The grand arrivals? Yep. Yeah. Gra the grand arrivals take place here in exactly uh, an hour and 15 minutes. So oh, very cool. We, uh, we're out at Toshiba Plaza between 1 and 3. Connor is scheduled to arrive at approximately 1.30 and Floyd about 30 to 45 minutes later. Okay, they'll arrive at Toshiba Plaza, though, not at, at MGM. Toshiba Plaza at approximately 1.30. Okay. For the first fighter, not together, but Connor is at 1.30 and Floyd would be at 2. 
And, and will Floyd be staying in, in, like, does he stay in your hotel? Is it an arrival? Because he's, you know, you're the host hotel and he stays there. I think I've even heard he's just got a permanent place there, or, or is it just more symbolic? <laughs> I don't know about that, but I, I do know that, you know, the, the fighter arrivals really signifies in the, the kickoff to fight week. And so we like to create a, a fan opportunity uh, to see the fighters, both main event and undercard, uh, who are on the telecast. And, uh, and and the fighters, the main event fighters themselves. So really, you know, really uh, celebrates a great ceremony with the fighters and, and creates a good media and fan opportunity. Did you hear that at 10 a.m. today, Ticketmaster crashed because everybody wanted uh, tickets to the weigh-ins? I did not hear that, but thank you for letting me know, and I'm sure our ticketing team is working diligently with the Ticketmaster team to to figure all that out. Yeah, well, no, no, I'm not saying it like in a disparaging way. I'm just saying that's how yeah, huge yeah, no, know, this event sure. is that uh, mm -hmm. Shamat yeah. Carr here, our, 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 our guest co-host, he wanted to go, and he was on it, and all of a sudden he's like, oh, man, I can't get in here. It's actually still down. Is it down? Yeah. Wow, yeah. That I mean, this thing wow. is incredible, man. Well, how many people want to be a part of this? This one is going to be huge, yeah. This is going to be huge. I mean, I know we've had some, some great, to, to more of your specific UFC and, and MMA listeners, uh, this is uh, definitely something that, that we've seen before on the UFC side. And now, be, like I said at the very beginning, that it, uh, it'll be a very unique event, and uh, we're all looking forward to it. You said you're not dealing with the celebrities, but have you dealt with the celebrities in the past? Uh, not specifically. No, our VIP team and casino marketing team works directly with the celebrities, and, and I focus more on all of our media operations and media relations efforts. I see. I, I've always wondered, like, how that works, you know, to, are you, if you're coming off an Oscar, right this way, sir. Uh -huh. But if you haven't made a film in like eight years, it's like, sorry, man, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta hit up Ticketmaster when it comes back up. Uh, how are you guys able? To, well, I guess you can't answer. Or do you know in any way like how that even works? Uh, well, the only thing I really know is that the the celebrities management team would reach out to our entertainment team. Mm -hmm. Uh, who would loop them in and connect them to the uh, correct colleagues and associates within the within our company who would manage that uh, that operation? So, like I said, I, yeah, I don't get too involved in uh, that. We respect the privacy of our of our all of our guests, whether a celebrity uh, or not, and uh, and so we don't get too involved in that. Gotcha, all right. Scott. Media has changed over the years. Um, could you maybe like? Uh, have you ever noticed any of them almost turning into divas, like celebrities at some point? Uh, you know, I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I think, I think they, uh, they have definitely a different lifestyle. Some of, the, some of the fighters and some of the celebrities have a different lifestyle. Uh, but in, if you're talking about these two specifically, uh, you'd probably have to ask them. I would, I would reserve judgment on that. No, I think goes men like uh, uh, the media. media you know how like like a Paris Perez. Oh Hill, yeah, well me. you guys are divas. Yeah, I mean that's true. <laughs> I work I work with you guys, uh, you know, every day. <laughs> All right, Scott. Sorry, I'll take that I, one on the chance. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll, we'll you take guys that. Are one. Great. You guys are great. You know that. Uh, we appreciate all the support and. Uh, and, and I appreciate you, uh, you know, you guys covering the events that, like you do, and and being a, and being a good partner to uh, to us and the company in Mandalay Bay specifically. Thank you, thank you very much. And sorry we kept you a couple minutes over. I just realized that I know you're a busy man. Uh, you're but thanks fine. for joining us on the show today. Always enjoyed talking to you both, and uh, like I said, I always happy to be on the show. And, and don't worry about taking some time. It's it's all about getting uh, getting the word out there and promoting the event, which is a great event for not only us as a, as a host, but but for the city, I think it's it really shows all the uh, all of the leagues and the the sports, everybody involved, and just fans in general that uh, Las Vegas is uh, is a is a major sports town. Awesome, thank you, sir, for the time. You're welcome, guys. Take care. I right, see you. That's Scott Gerdner, executive director, PR, sports and entertainment for MGM Resorts. We're gonna take our last break. We'll take one more call when we come back. Looks like Jim from Long Beach is on deck. We'll wrap things up, get some final predictions from Shamakar. Sandu here co-hosting the show uh, with us. We'll be right back.
Junkie Radio. This is MMA Junkie Radio. One more here are your hosts, Oops. Gorgeous George and Goes. One more phone call here, and then we'll uh, we'll say our goodbyes to our good friend Shamakar here in town to cover Mayweather McGregor. Follow him on Twitter at Sandu MMA S A N D H U M M A. He does a great job for USA Today Sports and MMA Junkie out there in the UK and in Europe. Your uh, crowning jewel had to be that London stop. Great, great work, mate. It was amazing, yeah. Um, you know, a lot of uh, colleagues of mine in the media would die for a one-on-one -on -one with McGregor, Mayweather, and Dana White, and to get them all back-to-back -back within half uh, an hour was pretty cool. In their cool. career, yeah, that was a they good run. Die for it. Yeah, yeah. It you got it in like half an hour. <laughs> yeah, it was bucket list. It was they literally kind of sandwiched um, us in between ITV Sport and Sky Sports News. And then the, after us, down the line, they had like 30 or 40 other outlets who, were ha who had to scrum together with their like, you know, you know, cameras and bits and pieces. But it kind of goes into that whole relationship with WME and the UFC and these guys where they put like USA Today sandwiched in between ITV Sport and Sky Sports News. So that was pretty cool. It should have been USA and UK Today at that time. I know. We've got to like, you know, get a, have a word with the upper management, kind of, uh, you know, expand things international. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, all right, folks, let's talk to Jim in Long Beach. What's up, Jim? What you got? Hey, how you guys doing this morning? Good, my man. Yeah, I'm predicting uh, Mayweather knocks him out in the seventh. I'm not sure if it's going to be the seventh or the eighth round knockout. He's going to take McGregor. He's going to be pushing McGregor into the ropes, and he's going to give him a lot of body shots. McGregor knows nothing about giving body shots. All he tries to do is he's going to just try to uh, headhunt, and he's not going to be able to to touch Floyd, and Floyd's going to get him in the and push him against the ropes and and knock him out. But he's going to give him, and he's going to knock him out with a uh, uppercut with a right cross, and that's going to be the fight. But I don't know if it's going to be the seventh or the eighth round, but that's what's going to happen to to McGregor. He's not. Floyd, gonna, he's not gonna Floyd's going to throw a, a left hand uppercut and a right cross to end the fight. Yeah, he's going to throw an uppercut. He's going to be going down, and then he's going to throw a right cross and knock him. He's going to be complete. He's already, already going to be knocked out when he gives him the uppercut. But he'll be he'll be knocked out like a sack of potatoes. Mm. You know, I could see one of the two, but that's that's that combo's I have a feeling he's really tough to throw shots. against us. Huh? I have a feeling he's going to take well, him out with body that's what shots. I want. That's what yeah. Well, I mean, I, I I've I've been saying accumulation of punches definitely gets the job done. Um, and as far as what he's saying, you know, yeah, I mean, that uh, seven or eight, it could take that long. Um, I'm going. I'm just sticking with what I started with, the, the earlier rounds. Four, I think, is my key number. Uh, I buy into people that say six. Two just seems too early for a guy that isn't uh, an aggressor usually. Mm -hmm. Especially, I will say this. Look, Floyd's been perfect so far, but two years out, uh, away from the sport, I think he'll be uh, just a bit more cautious than he should be because otherwise, if he had, if he had just fought Berto six months ago, then I think he goes in there and blazes. Uh, but because he's been away for a while, I think he'll just want to go in there and just capture the moment. Plus, it's different surroundings, the T-Mobile compared to MGM Grand Arena. I just think he needs to settle in, and it'll take those three minutes. Then boxing rounds can come, can go really, really quick. But uh, I'm just wondering about adrenaline dump for Conor McGregor. There's there's UFC jitters. I wonder if there'll be boxing versus Floyd jitters. You I know what I mean? There has to be. Uh, that guy's got ice water running in his veins when it comes to mixed martial arts, but we have yet to see what he's got on the boxing front. All right, Jim, good stuff, man. Thanks for the call. Welcome. Coming from Long Beach, California. Love it. Uh, let's see here. Um, I want to give you guys a shout-out. Uh, you guys have been, you know, you and the boys over there have been providing us with MMA history today as well. And yes. You guys have a lot to offer. So uh, thank you for that. Great contributions, um, not just when you cover the events, but, you know, just everything you guys have to offer. Um, you know, the Abby's a, a wonder when it comes to video, man. Killing it. He is yeah. a wizard. He sure is. Best That's a perfect word. The game. Yeah, he's perfect amazing. word for yeah. him. And, and uh, you've been doing really well with the one-on-one -on -one interviews. Thanks, man. I think what we need to do is just do some more call-ins with you, you know, because yeah, it sure. feels like we haven't talked to you in like a year, and I it shouldn't be that while. long, you it's know what I mean? It's been a while, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anytime. He has a good on-the-ground reporting voice, doesn't he? He does, yeah. yeah. I've always liked it. Um, and you're here through just Sunday, or? Yeah, I'm here till Sunday. I'm here all week. You got upgraded. What do you mean? Was it you? Uh, no, was it Dan? No, what? British Airways? 
Oh, oh yeah, business class. class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I was like, oh, sh should I, I not have said anything? No, or? no, no. no. I yeah, he was going they, another route. They, yeah. they hooked me up uh, so I could actually. Maybe he's like, like a drug mule or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what, could I, what are you talking about here? Don't say anything. <laughs> no, it was good. I could uh, actually lie down flat and uh, stretch out, and you know, being six foot two, that helped out a lot on an eleven hour flight to Vegas. Okay. Yeah. Alpha two or just you? Uh, no, uh, he came the day later, and he got the opposite end of the spectrum on his flight. Ah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In between two fat guys in the middle. <laughs> something like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> no elbow room, nothing. Yeah, it sucks. All right, Sandu, thanks for hanging out. Thanks, man. So for Danny Goes and Danny back east, I'm George. Go out there and be champions.